After the Little Walter story released, I remember contacting you, I think this was via email, or maybe I called you, and I said, what did Little Walter use? And you went into your, 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 your phrasing about, if you have bullet bikes that we search out today, and these great tube PA systems right. that we search out today, if those are at every single club, why would you need to have a favorite? So can you share a little bit with our students uh, what the lay of the land was back then and why equipment wasn't necessarily so important? When Little Walter was asked uh, in an interview what, what amp he used, you know, this is something that is, if you're, if you're going to be a harmonica, a blues harmonica player and play amplified harmonica, at some point, this is a question that you ask uh, of yourself, of whoever you know you have contact with, who might know the answer to that. And when he was asked, he couldn't even name the brand name, let alone the model number of what he was playing, which just told me uh, uh, that he really wasn't that concerned about it. I think probably his lack of concern was a product of the fact that there wasn't that much difference between the things that you could play through back then. Um, a basic tube amp, uh, you know, I, I'm not an expert on, on the, the, the technology, but I do know that, that many of the Fender and Gibson and National and many of these tube amps that were popular in the late 40s, early 50s, through the mid 50s, were based on a single circuit that was that was drawn by Bell Laboratories in the late 40s. This is the basic tube amp circuit. Now they would do things like add an extra tone control here, a little extra gain there, different tubes in, but the basic circuit was pretty much standard um, from 46, 47, somewhere in there, to about the mid-50s. So almost all those amps had a lot in common. Um, almost all the speakers were very similar. So there wasn't that much difference between what you would, what you would use. So what did little Walter use? Uh, what kind of, did he use a Gibson? Did he use a National? Did he use a Dan Electro? Did he use whatever? After asking all the guys that I was able to ask about this, Jimmy Rogers, Dave Myers, Lewis Myers, Jimmy Lee Robinson, um, several other people who were part of that circle in the 50s. None of them knew. None of them could answer that question. What did Little Walter play through? Whatever he had at that moment. Whatever he had at that moment was probably different each time he went into the studio. And, you know, you can listen to, to his sessions just chronologically. He has a different sound on every session. All the sessions have similar sounds, but... I, I suspect he used lots of different stuff. And I think the reason he, he didn't care so much about that is, again, because there was less variation between it. You couldn't choose between a twin reverb and a Mesa boogie and a custom harp amp at that time. Um, amps were amps were amps, pretty much. What he played through in clubs, the one, the one really sort of important piece of information I got was from Jimmy Lee Robinson, who played... Um, guitar with, with little Walter from the end of 55, I think, until 19, maybe early 59, so about four years. He said when little Walter played in clubs in Chicago, he did not bring an amp. He played through the PA system. Whatever was there, that's what he played through. When he went on the road, he brought his own PA system. He didn't bring a separate amp for vocals or a PA for vocals and a separate one for the harmonica. So, because it's what was available, that's what he used. And what he used happened to give him this really cool, unique sound. Um, a bullet mic, whether it's a Shure or an Ecstatic. Uh, I don't know of any, any photos of Little Walter playing a green bullet. Most of the photos I've seen, he's from that era, and there aren't many. Uh, he's playing a, a, an Ecstatic JT30 type mic. But... Any club you'd go into, especially, you know, a south side sort of a, you know, these places tend to be a little bit low, lower budget than, say, a downtown, you know, a theater or whatever, would have some sort of bullet mic on a mic stand and some sort of small Bell Sound Labs or Masco or, uh, you know, one of these many other companies that made small tube PA systems. That's what he played through. It actually wouldn't make that much sense for him 
to carry a separate harmonica amp and vocal system on the road because they weren't that much different. So he sang and played through the same microphone, which was plugged into the same tube PA system. Um, I, I was kind of friendly with Dave Myers, who was in Little Walter's first band after he, you know, when he, he began, began, you know, uh, his solo career, uh, post Muddy. So he was with, with Little Walter from 52 to, I don't know, 55, 56 or something like that. And, um, I asked Dave a number of times, and he was, oh, I don't know, he just played through whatever was there, you know, he just played the P through the PA, played through whatever he had at that time. But I played a gig with Dave one time, and I brought a Masco PA system to the gig. And Dave looked, he goes, where did you get that? And he was very, it was the only time he ever really showed any interest in the equipment that I was playing through. And I said, why? What is this? He goes, he just looked at you. Like, Where'd you get that thing from? And it was like a, a. And he never explained why. He was one of these guys who's kind of you know inscrutable in some way. He didn't reveal a lot, you know. Um, but but that that look of recognition told me that he probably felt that I had, you know, latched onto something that was that he at least recognized, you know. So it made me think, oh, okay, so there's probably some Masco PA system in Little Walter's past, you know. Having said that, I don't think he used it um, on every session. I don't think that, that it was the Little Walter sound. I think it was just one of many Little Walter sounds. But if you had to ask, if, I, if you held a gun to my head and said, what a Little Walter playthrough, I'd say probably a JT30 type mic, crystal, you know, a static mic. Um, and probably a series of, of 50s tube amps, you know, Nationals and Gibsons and, and um, not so much Fenders, I don't think, because Fenders weren't as available in Chicago at that time. Um, and uh, just, you know, what was available at the time was what he was using. He just used it out of necessity. Um, I do think, I've heard people say, well, if he was playing today, he'd be using this rack mount compressor and he'd be using this and that. Maybe he would, who knows, you know. But he was, he, he did express enough um, uh, sort of disapproval of, of not playing, you know, at some point in the late 50s, Leonard Chess recorded Little Walter. I think one of the first sessions he did this on was Everything's Gonna Be All Right session, which was, I think, 58 or 59. And it's in the book, by the way. Um, Little Walter was asked to play acoustically rather than with his amplifier. And, and in listening to these session tapes, he really, really was not happy about that. He felt that his sound was the amplified sound. That was his thing. Um, and he really, really wanted to play amplified and, and was asked not to do so. Uh, so I, I think that whatever he was doing, it would be something related at least to an amplified sound. I, I don't know, he might be, have a wireless rig, he might have, you know, again, a Mesa Boogie, or I don't know, whatever he'd be playing through. But it would not be completely distant from, it wouldn't be the other end of the, the spectrum from what he was using in the 50s. Related to this, by the way, I, I've, I've heard people say, Little Walter used an Echoplex, Little Walter used uh, two amplifiers at once, he did a, um, as far as I've been able to tell, he never used any outboard uh, equipment of any kind. A microphone, some form of amplifier, the end. I think part of that was probably because he didn't want to be bothered with all those things. He got his sound, the sound that he wanted, with these two pieces of equipment. Why add a reverb or an echoplex or something like that in the middle? You know, it, again, when he was interviewed and asked about these, about uh, how, how the echo was achieved on his records, he didn't even know how. He didn't hear it in the studio. He was just playing. The, the recording engineer was the guy who did all the other stuff. So uh, as far as I know, he never he didn't bring any extra pieces of equipment that weren't absolutely necessary. I, I would imagine that uh, when he was playing in a Chicago club, he probably had a briefcase full of harps and maybe a gun and a bottle of whiskey in there, who knows, and that was his rig. Show up at the club, play through the PA system, go home at the end.